They were talking about Medusa, simple LLM inference acceleration framework with multiple decoding heads. Um, bit of a weird thing here though. So as always, I am of course doing my little paper rundown with the highlights and the talking over the highlights. Why is this what's happening right now? But also what I am doing on top of that is we are going to get into what I call Medusa's Uglier Sisters, which are two alternative options that are much worse, but it's a fun learning exercise. So if you want to like learn how Medusa works. These are two easier versions to look at first, if that makes any sense. Um, and then check out Medusa later kind of thing. Um, there's two sisters. The first one is just a straight up, like simplified, only takes one aspect of Medusa. Uh, it's called, what did I call it again? Steno, which was the actual myth character's um, name, like her sister. And the other one is a totally different idea. Um, uh, I call it Uriel after the other sister. Um, that's like, it's not the same as Medusa. It's like a different mechanism that I made up. And it's not it's not better. It's not like a good one, but it's worse than Medusa's actual mechanism from the actual paper. Um, but it's interesting and it's a fun little thing to mess around with. I was kind of practicing just my skills and that stuff. And if you want, you can download all this code afterwards. It is written such that it's easy to understand, at least hopefully like I explain stuff going through. And also like if you want to learn like regular GPT stuff, the GPT like code for this is all based off of them. Andre Karpathy's uh, guide like a year ago that he made on YouTube. Anyways, let's get into it. So we have LLM inference is predominantly memory bound, um, which is one reason that my, my URL thing is pretty bad. Anyways, um, this bottleneck is inherent to the sequential nature of autoregressive decoding. We introduce Medusa, a method that enhances LLM inference by integrating additional decoding heads capable of concurrently predicting multiple tokens. These heads are fine-tuned in a parameter-efficient manner and can be added to any existing model. Our experiments primarily focus on scenarios with a batch size of 1. So this really doesn't work for batch decoding. Not that it matters. Most local single users will don't need that. It doesn't really matter kind of thing. Batch decoding is more of a specific automation use case. Let's just go through the diagram right here. This is a cool little graphic that they had some AI model draw up for them. I think it was pretty nice. Although it's, it looks more like an angel llama than it does like a Medusa llama, but whatever. Um, basically, input, right? Prompt. What happens if a Medusa meets a llama? Turn into embeddings all the transformer layers, original models, and LLM head, right? But here, we take our last hidden, and we put it through Medusa heads. Medusa heads, same as the LLM head, they're a bit more complicated, they're just like a feed-forward layer, basically. So instead of a multiply by D comma V shape matrix, they first do a feed-forward layer with non nonlinearity, then multiply by a shape D comma V, where D is embedding dimension, and V is the vocab length, right? You get three of them, right? And whereas the actual original LM head does next token prediction, it tries to like, it gives a few ideas, top K ideas of the next word. Uh, the Medusa heads, uh, they predict future time steps. So this is the next time step. This is two time steps ahead. I know it's confusing, right? Three time steps ahead, four time steps ahead. One of the suggestions I had is like, so this paper is designed such that you can create Medusa heads and attach them to a pre-existing large language model, which is why they call them LM head is a different thing from Medusa heads one through three. In reality, if you're building a model from scratch that integrates this, which I think is a great idea, I've actually already tried it and it works better for sure. Um, or not for sure, I should say, but it seemed like it worked better to me. Um, in reality, they would just all be Medusa heads. So you wouldn't have the LM head, just the first Medusa head would predict next token prediction is what you would really do if you wanted to like implement this from scratch. Um, but basically the Medusa heads, this one picks out two time periods ahead the token, this one three time periods ahead, this one four time periods ahead, right? Um, and then it creates, using all of these predictions, right, this is a combination of predictions, it creates candidate sequences. It is difficult not, it's apostrophe difficult A, it is apostrophe not, right? And then they have a mechanism that basically chooses from among the candidates efficiently to choose it is difficult, right? Da, 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 da. Oh, some background. Um, obviously, you want to implement like other forms of decoding, uh, inference speed up, like reducing KV cache, which I didn't do in mine, um, or quantization. Um, Medusa counts though as a type of speculative decoding, just a much better version than prior attempts at speculative decoding, basically. So what what these, what these LLM heads are doing is they are speculating. These LLM heads, these Medusa heads, are speculating as to what the actual LLM head would predict. All right. Uh, Medusa follows the same framework as speculative decoding, where each decoding step primarily consists of three sub-steps. One, generating candidates, two, processing candidates, and three, accepting candidates, right? 
uh, introduce Medusa heads. These are additional decoding heads appended to the last hidden states of the original model. Um, we utilize a single layer of feed forward network with a residual connection for each head. Now that I'm thinking about it. I'm going to go and add this PDF um, to the GitHub repo. I, remember, I don't know if I said this, I, but all this code is in a GitHub repo that I'll put in the, link the description. I'm also going to add the PDF with all the highlights and the notes. I'm not going to read the blue ones because those are um, math notes. But through Medusa heads, we obtain a probability predictions for the subsequent subsequent K plus one tokens. These predictions enable us to create length K plus one continuations as candidates. So K plus one long tokens, right? Strings that are candidates. We employ a tree structured attention mechanism to process multiple candidates. So my implementation does not do this. Remember the first one's just like introductory thing. The Steno and then the, the um, Uriel has an alternative to this uh, attention structure. Uriel's alternative is worse. It's a lot worse, but it was it was a fun thing to try out. You know what I mean? As exemplified, the top two predictions from the first Medusa head and the top three from the second result as a total of two by three equals six candidates, right? So here we just chose the root is the actual original LM head, and we just take it for granted whatever it gives us it gives us. The first Medusa head, in this example, they chose two um, top, top K, top two tokens it predicted. And then the second Medusa head, it made three, right? So there's three here, right? Three, um, and it's a common, it's a combinatorics thing, right? So for the first, this you get matched up to the three, and this also gets matched up to the three. So we create our candidates, and they have an attention mask designed to make sure that things only pay attention to the preceding pieces. Um, now I'm thinking about it. I'm tempted to actually go about and, and fully implement Medusa, just because this is kind of interesting. I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to. If you want to see actual Medusa code, check out. They have um, I have it downloaded here. I know I do. Um, they have an actual GitHub repo posted. It's just that the code that I made from her uglier sisters is a lot simpler than the code that they made. Like they, they have some piece here. They try to like teach you how this stuff works. They have, like walkthroughs. They're not very good. Not gonna lie. Um, I could tell there were certain places where I was like, damn, I get what they're saying. They're doing a very bad job at describing it right now. Um, and other parts where I was like, I'm just not going through all this right now. Like, this is just too much. Like, when I was trying to, like, look through their actual base code, I was like, this is just a nightmare. For a given case head, its top SK predictions serve as the basis for candidate formation, where SK is a designated hyperparameter. So SK being, like, K being the length it shows, top K for each head, right? Um, more math, the loss function changes. In the loss function, it's the same, except you're predicting... Uh, tokens ahead, not just the next token, uh, and you also have this discount factor, um, so that like, yeah, uh, so that we don't weight the later heads as heavily as the first head, um, which I think that makes sense to do. I'd be interested to test out and see how a transformer, a transformer can do um, predicting multiple heads into the future, like can do with no discounts. I'd be curious to see how it works, like if it would work very well. But um, I'm too lazy to try it, even though it'd be an easy switch. I just don't. I'm done with the project. I'm so done. Um, to further improve the accuracy of Medusa heads, we can train Medusa heads together with the backbone model. However, this requires a special training recipe. So basically, Medusa is designed such that um, you take a backbone model, like Llama or Vicuna or whatever, and you attach these new heads on there and then train just the new heads. Here, they're saying Medusa 2, the version 2, is you take that old original model, attach the heads, and train the base model itself a little bit. Um, now they don't train the actual base model. What they do is they add um, LoRa's uh, learning adaptation matrices onto it um, to help edit that base model. Um, but basically the same thing, right? Um, you do have to combine the loss. We're going to do that, right? I trained a model from scratch um, rather than they're adding on the base models. I just trained a model from scratch to um, work like this. Uh, da -da -da -da, differential learning rates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More of the heads. Uh, when the temperature is set to zero, it reverts to greedy decoding as only the most probable token possesses non-zero probability. As the temperature surpasses zero, the outcome of the greedy decoding will consistently be accepted, right? Uh, likewise, general scenarios and increased temperature will correspondingly result in longer accepted sequences. So I like that their method kept temperature in with the whole attention mask thing, whereas mine in here, no more temperature. I had to use a very weird method to make it all work. Um, we propose an automated self-distillation pipeline to use the model itself to generate the training data set for Medusa heads, which matches the output distribution, distribution of the model. So basically all these Medusa heads, they're during inference time, not trying to predict, I mean, they are trying to predict the actual data, but during training, they are predicting the actual data just the same way that the 
next token prediction head is, right? During inference time, we are essentially using the next token prediction head as the the gold standard and, and trying to get Medusa heads to match up with the actual first initial head. They have a whole thing about like the later heads producing options and then we're choosing the best option and it's like it's graph node structure. Uh, with a fixed number of total nodes in the tree, a regular tree structure may not be the best choice. Intuitively, those candidates composed of the top prediction of different heads may have different accuracies. Therefore, we can leverage an estimation of the accuracy to construct the tree structure. So they're not just taking like um, all possibilities. They're weighting by the probabilities that the actual heads give, I think. Something like that. Uh, we can greedily add nodes to the tree by choosing the node that is connected to the current tree and has the highest accuracy. Yeah. So, con so a little term they made up here. Acceleration rate. This refers to the average number of tokens decoded per decoding step. In a standard autoregressive model, this rate is 1. And overhead. This is the you used to characterize the per decoding step overhead compared to classic decoding and is calculated by dividing the average per step latency of the Medusa models by that of the vanilla model. I did not calc this in my thing. I did calc the acceleration rate, I think, but I, I did not calc the um, overhead. I should. Uh, speed up. Uh, this refers to the wall time acceleration rate. Wall time meaning total time taken, right? Following these definitions, we have the relationship speed up equals acceleration rate divided by overhead. So in their experiment, they did five Medusa heads uh, that each had just a one layer feed forward neural net. And I guess it's a two matrices, but with one nonlinearity, right? Uh, discount factor to 0.8 to the K. So K being the each case head, so the further out heads have a smaller, as um, I have a more significant discount rate. For Medusa 2, we use either LoRa or QLoRa for fine tuning and set the learning rate of Medusa heads to be four times larger than the backbone model. LoRa is applied to all the linear layers of the backbone model, including the language model head. Uh, so here are the graphs of the actual performance, speed up on different model sizes, right? So they took a 7 million primary model, I think it was, I think it was Vacuna if I correctly. The base tokens per second was 40 something. Um, implementing the simpler Medusa version, they get 100 tokens per second. Implementing the big Medusa version with the whole pre, not pre, not big, but the including pre-training the actual model or continually training the pre-trained model, they get almost three times speed up, right? Um, same thing here with 13 billion, it's pretty similar um, ratio speed up, right? Uh, they also split up by task, which is pretty interesting. So the reason to be different by task is because depending on the task or whatever the output is, the probabilities that are put out are different. So the top K options, right? And so what they found is that harder tasks, aka extractions, the hardest one, coding is pretty hard, right? Um, the They uh, have an even better speed up from all this stuff versus humanities was the lowest because humanities, I guess, is the, in reasoning, is the easier tasks, I guess. That's how I interpret it anyways. Um, how do I get back to size? We observe that the coding category benefits from a, a 3.29 speed up, suggesting that Medusa is particularly effective for tasks in this domain. Are we almost done yet? This is different models, Vicuna, Zephyr, different sizes. A 33 billion model too. that didn't improve quite as much um, as the other ones. So I guess as the model size gets bigger, the Vicuna's um, speed increase gets smaller. At least that's from this very small sample size. Da -da -da -da. Analyzing tree attention here. Uh, okay, now let's get to my actual ones, right? Uh, like I said, all this code is posted on GitHub and it is uh, available. It was based off of Andre Karpathy's original lesson for like a G simple, simple GPT. Um, you can download this, read it. Inside the folder, you will find my highlighted PDF as well as I'm going to remove this regular GPT, I think. Um, you'll find input, which is just the tiny Shakespeare data set, or README that explains everything. Um, Medusa's uglier sisters, where I actually like go through and teach what I made, and the performance version, which isn't really much for performance, honestly, but like I just took all the print statements basically. But anyways, uh, Medusa's uglier sisters. So importing stuff. These are hyperparameters, right? The new ones that we add are m equals five, which is the number of Medusa heads, and then Medusa discount. I also use 0.8. Um, I trained two models, one with m equals 3 and one with m equals 5. The m equals 5 model is better, although not because the heads are better. I actually realized that the heads are like should max out at 3, honestly, um, at least for my use cases, um, but because I also incorporated a uh, 
weight decay, which I forgot to incorporate in the smaller one. Uh, loading tiny Shakespeare, getting our actual, we're doing not tokens, we're just doing character-based tokeniz tokenization, right? Training test split, getting our batch data. This, so you can see, so normally batch data, the um, input X will be the same size as the output Y, right? Um, but here, uh, we're training it a bit differently. Um, why is that? Oh, I see why. That's silly. Yeah, here we're training it a bit differently, where we actually have the output because we're training multiple heads in different times in the future. So this first one is one time step ahead. So regular next token prediction. See how like this is 41, then 56. This one starts at 56, right? Whereas the third token here is 53. This next one starts 53, right? Go all the way out here for four away to 57. This one starts at 57. So basically like we're using these other target wise to train further ahead of time to get those later heads working. Estimating loss. This is a simple feed forward network, simple attention head. GPT wise, it's a decoder, right? Yeah. Um, um, and then multi head attention and then a transformer block. Okay. And here's the new thing. So class snake, snake is in a single head of Medusa, right? Um, pretty simple, just a linear layer, a nonlinearity. I use, I used relu, um, and another linear layer, right? And then I put dropout in, probably shouldn't have, I don't know, it was, it was weird. I didn't put it on the outside. I was kind of confused on that. I was rushing through this. It, it works, but like, it's not good decisions at all. I should probably go back and change things if I actually cared. Anyways, Medusa GPT. So this class, this training GPT is totally correct according to the Medusa paper, at least as far as I can tell, right? Um, I mean, it's a simpler version, obviously, but it, it does what you're supposed to do. It has the Medusa heads in it. You could, if you wanted to, create a... Medusa generate function. I did not. I created my Steno and Uriel, her sisters, generate functions, and I mess with those. Um, but if you make a Medusa, you can literally use the same code, the same model, and just write a Medusa generation function, and that'll work just fine for you. Because this model, this base model, is just effectively a Medusa, like it's the exact same thing. All the Uriel and Steno use the same base model. They just have different decoding schemes. Um, Transformer stuff, boring, boring, boring. Take that last residual Medusa heads. We have a list of those snake Medusa heads, right? Um, what do we have here? Boring transformer stuff. That's the usual. Here is the first head is the regular next token prediction head. And just for sake of like doing it like they did, I had separate, I separated out. This is the regular head. Then these are the Medusa heads logits, right? Um, in reality, if I were training a model from scratch with Medusa heads, I would just incorporate these into one variable and call them all Medusa heads, but instead this one's the regular NTP model head. Um, and then print statement, just for sake of clarity, if you're training, right? Um, here we have, yeah, regular stuff, regular loss, and then we create our Medusa loss. I think this, I could have... I could have implemented this honestly, but I didn't. Um, that line should work instead. It's a, a one line version of this for loop basically, um, but I'm not gonna change it now. I don't wanna break anything. Um, and basically you take the loss of the individual Medusa heads. Notice how this loss has that discount factor. It's just that 0.8 to the power of whatever the head number is, right? And then we get output loss, right? And output logits as well. Then we, uh, here's our generate function. This is regular, just next token prediction generate is all it is. It's, it's the same as you'd expect. Um, training, you can train your Medusa model here. That's the number of parameters that I have in mind, 1.7 million. Optimizer, training loop. Um, I trained it for how many iterations? I want to say, yeah, 10,000. Um, it works okay. You can save the model. If you want to train yourself, train it right there. Or I recommend you just load the models I've already trained. They're also going to be in this GitHub repo. You can just load right there, right? Um, you can do a regular GPT inference. This GPT inference is the slowest, but it's also the highest quality. Um, I'll, I'll get to that why in a second. Like the actual tokens that come out of this are better because um, my uglier sisters are in fact uglier. We'll get to why they mess up later. So Medusa's first sister, right? Uh, Steno. So this is just teaching the little first piece of the idea of speculative decoding, basically. The idea is like, for next token prediction, right? You have, how can I zoom in on this? Yeah, I can. You have an input, like, so we're doing Tiny Shakespeare, right? So I inputted Romeo, right? 
Next token prediction actually predicts for every single letter, it gives you the next letter. Like it's not just that it predicts the question mark at the end after the O, it actually can give you all of these intermediate ones because training for GPTs is done parallel, not just across batches, but also across time steps within a sequence, uh, right? Which I didn't know until recently. I was pretty stupid. I was just wandering around not knowing that. Um, anyways, um, so what Medusa heads do, instead of predicting the next letter, see R goes to O, right? O, right? O goes to M, which is the next letter, right? If this is assuming it's all correct. If the NTP could be incorrect as well, that'd be fine. But like assuming NTP is a very good model, then these are all correct and they match up. What Medusa heads do is they do two time period or more than one time period ahead, right? So we have the R is the inputs, outputs M. M is two time periods ahead. O is the input, outputs E. E is two time periods ahead. And not just two, but for Medusa head number two would do three ahead. Medusa head number four would do five ahead, right? What we do here is let's say we have an input of just one single token, one character R, right? Next token prediction should give us an O. The first Medusa head should give us an M. Second Medusa head give us an E for going for Romeo, right? Um, what happens now if we predict R O, if we take from so so here's what we're doing. So we 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 predict you we, we input R, we get out O, M, and E, right? Now what happens if we take that output R O M E and we can get out NTP can predict those first O M E's right and it can c confirm for us that we're right so like the fact that um, when we plug these three or these all four in right here that like Medusa had one was correct because O here did in fact predict M with NTP right so the next token prediction is the gold standard. So right here, this line, the reason we're not giving it just E is one for context to have all the information, but also to confirm that this guess of M was correct. And it was in fact correct. When you put in RO, you get out M, right? So NTP is the gold standard that we're judging the Medusa heads on. But so when we when we inputted this ROME, when we took this and we inputted it here, we got to not only check whether it was correct, and we did find that these two are correct, the ones we were questioning about, but we also got our next Medusa head predictions, right? So we effectively, we have inputted twice, like we have done two inputs to our model, but we have a total of four, five tokens because we have the ROME now all confirmed and next token prediction also gave us an O. So even though we only have two inputs so far, input, input, we actually have five total tokens confirmed. Right, that's the speed up, and then we also get Medusa heads. They give us the next character. So question mark new line, for example. Right. So what happens if it's wrong though? What happens if the Medusa heads are incorrect? Well, input R, NTP gives us an O. Let's say Medusa head one is correct, gives us an M. Medusa head two is wrong, gives us a U. Maybe it thinks we're it's gonna. Maybe it thinks that NTP is gonna give the name Romulus, for example. Right. What we do is we take this R O M U and we input it, and we get as an output, O-M-E, what? So basically, next token prediction said, nope, you were wrong, this U was incorrect, it actually is an E, right? And now, next token prediction also, keep in mind, because we input it with a U, it's gonna see R-O-M-U, and it actually will think Romulus, and so will the rest of the heads, right? But we notice this little incorrect piece right here, this incorrect E, not a U, is a red flag where our, our algorithm kind of stops and checks that, right? So now what we have instead is whereas earlier we had R-O-M-E-O, -E so five characters off of two runs. Now, off of these two runs, we have R-O-M-E, so four characters off of two runs. So whenever the Medusa heads are incorrect, we just get fewer characters per run. Um, but even here, we're still ahead of the game, right? And because of this little piece at the end, U predicting L, or in here it was E predicting O, NTP guarantees us we always get at least one token per run. Even if all the Medusa heads are wrong, we will get at least one token guaranteed. So uh, this methodology is at least as fast as regular NTP prediction, right? Um, okay. Now I have my actual generate Steno function, right? I walk you through all this stuff line by line in here. I'm tired, I'm not gonna do it right now. Basically, what I just described here is what happens, and each piece right here is greedy decoding for Steno, right? And when we actually run Steno, um, 
there's like there's in here there's like logic to check and everything to confirm that like the things are correct and not whatnot. We actually run Steno. I give you like a bunch of print statements so you can if you want to labor over this and just follow through it and like understand how it works basically. Um, but what we get here, this is the output and our tokens per inference are 2.16. So a what's that a 116% speed up or something or a 216% speed? Uh, it's it's a or over double the the speed basically. Problem is, it was greedy decoding. Steno only uses greedy decoding. So if you actually read this, this example when I ran this wasn't as bad as usual. A lot of the time when I run Steno, it's so repetitive. It's just in the same sentence over and over again, as you'd expect from greedy decoding, right? Makes sense. Um, if you're already aware of how that, how that works. Um, so Steno is not great. It's a speed up, but it does not. It's not amazing because it's so repetitive. Even here. Um, I will not be the man. I will not see the man of the man. Like it's definitely repeating quite a lot, even in this better version. In other times I've run this, it's given me like the same person's name and the same line over and over and over again. It's been super annoying, right? So Medusa's second sister, Uriel, the explorative one. So in the Greek myth, she like explored or something. And this is a better, um, that's why I chose this name for her. Um, the basic idea of Uriel, right? We're going to use top K instead of argmax, just like the actual Medusa, right? But whereas they use an attention mechanism to choose which are the best of the candidates, we are going to construct every single possible candidate, as they do, every single possible candidate sequence, the top K results, all right? And then we are going to run every single one of the possibility candidates through the model using batched inference. This is a crazy, inefficient, terrible idea, but I wanted to do it. It, was, it looked interesting, right? Um, uh, it's it, Even though it is... It's much worse on memory, which is kind of the whole difficulty, which sucks. Um, but it is uh, interesting, I thought, anyways. I thought it was just clever. It just seemed kind of cool. So we take every single one of the possible candidates that we made from the top K, right? And we run them through the model in batches, all right? So we the model actually checks all of them, basically, right? So we, and instead of comparing them to greedy decoding, to a greedy version of the NTP's output, we instead check them against the NTP's top K results. So we actually make top K candidates combinations, right, from the NTP. And we compare all of our Medusa head candidates to our NTP candidates, right? And there's going to be a lot more Medusa head candidates than NTP candidates when you look at the combination later, but whatever. And then we select whichever successful candidate is the longest, right? So now, so same thing that they did also, longest selections. The difference here is that whereas they made these candidates and then an attention layer, or attention mechanism to check which ones to use. We did a weird batch inference and made every possible combination, right? And then, so we select, select whichever successful candidate is the longest, just as they did from their options. Um, if there are multiple acceptable candidates, now we have to choose whether we want the one that is most probable, least probable, or somewhat in between. Um, this is a downside of uh, my approach. Their approach allows you to use temperature, which is just much more robust and like lacks better. Whereas here, you're choosing between like essentially still greedy versus like way too improbable. And I have a way to get an in-between zone there, but it's still not how I would like. It's like these, it's like the worst combination of like, there are chunks where it's greedy and it's very repetitive. And there are other chunks where it's highly sporadic as if the temperature is too high. So it's terrible. Not a good, it's, it's the uglier sister for sure. Um, anyways, I set that up here. Uh, here's some setup functions. This is the one that like makes all the possible combinations, um, all the possible candidate sequences, right? This one, it's the it's a it's a hyped up, not hyped up. It's a generalized version of the compare that was done in the previous in Steno, um, but it now works for hella combinations basically. Then we have this beginning first run piece, same as usual, um, or as the previous one, except now we're doing instead of finding one greedy string of medusa heads we are now doing candidates of them where, where they go yeah they're here um we get logits right pass those in we get our top k for our medusa heads uh then we make check all combinations of those right which are combinations of all possible candidate sequences um and then we have to exp uh take our actual idx so our actual up till now sequence and we make it bigger concatenate the two together so now we now send to put into the model then we do batched inference on a lot on k to the m of um, these uh, these pieces. It's it's very memory intensive. It's not it's not smart. It's a terrible method. Uglier sister for sure. 
Um, and then for the outputs, we don't do greedy. We actually do, we check the top Ks, then we make combinations of those top K possible outputs to check against. Um, check, check, check. Do the actual comparison here. We get an output, we get our actual how many, how long will it be, how many Medusa heads made the, made the cuts. And we also have to now choose if there's more than one Medusa head that made the cuts, we have to choose which ones you want to keep. Um, and you can read into it here, but basically like it's, it's not as good as temperature. It's just not as good. Um, anyways, output, yada, yada, yada. Um, this new parameter K equals two. You can change it to three if you want. If you have a lot of RAM, go ahead. I can't do it on my MacBook Air. No way. Um, and it's probably just not a very good idea in general. I don't think it's not smart. Um, but anyways, run that. It also gives you hella outputs, hella print statements. And here's what it looks like. And we get a 2.69 tokens per inference, whereas the other sister, the ugly, the even uglier one, got 2.16, right? Check it out. The performance version, these are not, this is just a different notebook. It's a performance version of the previous one. It's not that much faster, honestly. I didn't really do much. I just took out print statements, basically. I just took out the prints. But um, anyways, I just, it's, it's all simplified down a little bit. And then... If you go to inference, so we get tokens per second on regular GPT inference, we get 11.7. These numbers are pretty variable. I mean, there's a consistent winner and loser, but like the numbers themselves jump around a lot based off like how hot my PC is, if I have other apps open, stuff like that. But we have 11.7 tokens per second from just regular next token prediction. And Steno, how does Steno do? We get 20.4 tokens per second, right? Um, that's, a, that's a good improvement right there, although it is, look how repetitive this thing is. Streep think there, thinks there, then there is, thinks there. It, it's it's so much dumber than regular NTP with temperature, which actually sounds like someone imitating English, like an alien trying to speak English or something. And then Uriel, how does this one do? We get higher tokens per inference. We get 13.85 tokens per second. So even the tokens per inference is, is increased. So we're at 1.956 tokens per inference. Um, I created 1.5. Um, the reality of the fact is that like, because this is so memory intensive and so just fucking terrible, um, sorry for cursing, uh, we get only 13.8 tokens per second as compared to regular GPT has what? Has 11.7, right? So it's an improvement technically, but like not really. It like, it went from like using up a good chunk of my RAM to using up all my RAM and getting like slowed down by the RAM. Um, there are ways to do this. My method, I think that'd be better. Um, and still not the same as Medusa, but I'm done with this project. This whole thing for me was more of a mess around with PyTorch and gain some experience kind of things. I've up till now I've been doing only math with my research and I've not touched very much code. This is like a confidence gaining experience for me and like actually doing code for once, which I in the past have been like outsourcing code to buddies of mine. Now I'm just doing it myself because I just need to. It, it's, it's necessary. Um, uh, this also, I know these results weren't comparable to Medusa paper. They'd be more comparable if I bothered to use some of the things that they use in Medusa paper. So, for example, that um, KV, where was that? KV, reducing KV cache. This is a method that they used along with the actual Medusa new method that just everyone uses. Just um, keeping your old KV KV calculations, right? I didn't do it. You should though. And if I were to do it, I don't think it would be an even increase in speed across all three of these, I think it would disproportionately help Uriel. I'm not sure about that though. Um, it's my intuition. I haven't actually looked at the math or anything in depth. Um, but I think this actually could, this method could do reasonably well. But again, like this only made sense because I had a, a model that was, how big was it? Like 1.7 billion million parameters. 1.7 million, right? It was not in here. Um, but because my model's so small that I had extra RAM room to actually do this, um, whereas if you're running this with even like a, a locally in a 7 billion parameter model, um, you would not want to, um, do either. You would not want to do a um, Muriel. Basically Muriel would tank a PC is my, my impression, no matter how much RAM you have. No, I mean, it's doable, not no matter how much RAM you have. It's definitely doable, but it's, it's, it's too much. Like, it was an interesting thing, like things like explore, like test out my coding abilities kind of thing and like learn a little bit, but it's not like very usable. Um, anyways though. That is it for the video. Um, link to the GitHub in the description. Uh, it's a good learning practice, I think, just to read through this stuff. I think it would be anyways. And I definitely wrote down, wrote this stuff down to be very learnable. Like I have just hella comments explaining everything throughout. But um, like, subscribe, please. Hit the bell, I guess, YouTuber things. Hop in the Discord. Yeah, end of video.